earlier than it did a mere 30 years ago. We know that many scale insects will outbreak. They simply survive better, lay more eggs in the urban environment than in the rural area less than 10 miles away. Spider mites, at 15 degrees centigrade, it takes them a month to develop. When we increase to 30, seven days. Five times as many generations per unit time. So in a warming world for our multivolting pests, they're simply gonna say thanks a lot. We like it hot. Hartmut um, Balder over in Berlin found that simply going to the sunny side of the street, these buildings, these lindens were in shade. These ones are get the reflected heat. You can multiply several times the number of spider mites found on those lindens. And a common practice is the application of fertilizers and insecticides in the urban environment. Next to pruning and landscape and removal, fertilization and spraying are the next two biggest money makers for arboriculture back in the States. Fertilization. A great study, again, done by Dan Herms, found that fertilization basically decreased the insect resistance of woody plants in almost every study in his review. No study showed increased resistance, despite what you've heard, and that sucking insects, mites, and foliars, foli foliovores, leaf feeders, are going to do better. Why? Increased nutritional value. You put on more nitrogen. It goes through the plant into the bug, and the bug says, thanks. That's just what I needed and decrease secondary metabolites. These are the compounds that protect plants. What we can see when we fertilize plants, they put on more growth. But to grow more, that carbon has to come from somewhere. Where does the carbon come from for more growth? It comes from defense. So the concentrations of defensive compounds, tannins, allelochemicals declines with increasing fertilization. Plants have limited carbon budgets. So we fertilize the bejeebers out of them and the plants are becoming more vulnerable by virtue of this. Larval growth is increased. Our caterpillars simply grow faster when you give them more nitrogen. This is not surprising. Another review found that it didn't matter whether it's chewers, suckers, chewers, spider mites, or galling insects. A large study found the, the purple here means a positive response. In other words, you fertilize the plant, the bug says thank you. So high levels of fertilization can spawn insect outbreaks. Where do trees evolve? It's not a trick question. In a forest. And where do they get their nitrogen? They recycled their own leaves. Do you think it was one to four pounds per thousand? Well, I don't think so. No, they're very stingy. In that situation, yeah, they could use some help, couldn't they? They're taking away the leaves. There's no recycling here, but I think they'll be okay there. So what should we do? Well, get rid of the pest first. In other words, if you have a pest problem, get rid of it. Okay, that's the key. Then ask the plant. Look at your incremental growth. Look at your leaf size and shape. Look at the color. Slow release is probably better than ammonia, high rates. And again, in the strategy of plants, annuals need more nitrogen than herbaceous perennials, which need more than woodies. So your woody trees and shrubs are very stingy. Now, if you're in a production system, a nursery, you do want to have rapid growth, and you have to keep your eyes open for the pests. But once they're installed, slow them down. Slow them down. They're very good at this. How am I doing time, Mark? Two more minutes. Well, three? Thank you, perfect. Okay, this is like a miracle. I never get this talk done in 45 minutes. Um, I wanna circle back on this one very briefly. Uh, I talked about the eradication effort. This is my study site in Central Park. They had a big problem with the beetle up there. Uh, as a result, what they did is set up a quarantine eradication. As part of the eradication, they did vast number of insecticide treatments. Um, it's a great place to work. This is Literary Walk, a great stand of uh, American uh, elm trees. This is what it looked like in June. The leaves turned brown and fell off the trees. 
The question was why. We got up in the canopy, we discovered a spider mite that was heretofore undescribed. We found that when you apply imidacloprid to an elm tree and then feed that foliage to a spider mite, it increases its fecundity. The spider mite lays more eggs. We call it Viagra for mites. <laughs> now, the reason this happens is the imidacloprid shuts down about five different genetic pathways that the plant uses to defend itself from pests. So it downregulates a whole suite of genes, making the plant more nutritionally available. The other thing we found is when we fertilize the trees and we then have spider mites full of imidacloprid. The mites aren't killed by imidacloprid, they store it. When we expose predators like ladybird beetles and lace wings to spider mites that have ingested imidacloprid, they become toxic. The mobility of the predators declines, their feeding rate declines, and their longevity declines. We call these mite bombs. So the mites are not affected by imidacloprid, but they become toxic for the top-down regulators. It's a double whammy. And this is why we see mite outbreaks often associated with the use of imidacloprid in particular. It's a trade-off. That problem clears itself up in about three years. If we don't treat those trees, those trees die due to the borer. So these things have their costs and benefits. Where do we go or where do we leave it? Well, in my opinion, this is what we need. We have to increase biodiversity at all levels, starting at the genetic level. That's what Mother Nature's plan was. Everybody look at the person on the right. Now do it. Everybody look at the person on the left. Did you see yourself? If you did, there's something funky going on here, okay? <laughs> This is Mother Nature's plan. It's diversity. That's the solution. Diversity to all levels. Use native and non-native plants to enhance your ecosystem services. This, this argument about native ex and exotic is passe. It's time to move past it. It's time to say what service does the plant provide. That's the critical thing. Not where it comes from. I don't care about that. I care about what service it provides in my landscape. Reduce threats. We have to have better legislation to keep these things out. We've got to mitigate climate, tree and the way to, uh, climate change. The way to do it is to plant more trees, shrubs, and ground covers, right? Replace impervious surfaces with ones that allow infiltration and apply soil amendments, nutrients, and pesticides on a prescription, not on a broadcast or on a regular basis. I think we do this. I think the situation improves. So with that, I have to thank my funding agencies uh, and all the students who went blind counting millions of mites. And once again, I thank, uh, I thank Keith and Barchams for letting me come across the pond and tell you some bug story. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Well, many thanks to Mike for a, a really uh, entertaining and enthralling talk. And uh, I particularly appreciated some new angles on the natives versus uh, exotics there. A lot of food for thought, and many thanks for that. We're going to take a break now for lunch. Uh, I've been asked to point out that there are the opportunity to have a tour of the nursery. Uh, there will be nursery tours to see uh, Bartram people at the back as you go out. They'll no doubt direct you in the, in the right way. Uh, we've got quite a long lunch break, but that's really necessary to get you know, nearly 500 or so people through uh, a lunch without uh, any accidents and such. But can I ask you to be back promptly for half two? We will make a prompt start at half two. Thank you very much. <laughs>